Hey, hey, everybody, it's me, your guy, Broken Helmet here. Welcome to another episode of your series, The Minecraft Guide. Today, we're on episode number... Uh, well, we'll put it this way. We're currently, as it stands, 80 episodes away from episode number 100. So you do the math, you figure it out. Well, that's right, Elites. I've come up with a new way of speaking. It's called speaking in code. So put on your big brain hats. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be big sad and left in the dust. So we meet again over at the spider farm. It is working amazing. I've got to say, last episode I said this thing would work pretty good. That, that was a lie. This thing has been working beautifully. I've been down here for a while collecting up levels for some of today's projects. Today's episode is going to be an interesting one. We have a few things that we need to get done. Today, we need to hopefully transform the majority of this room into something that looks really, really nice. We also need to probably hit a fortune pickaxe. It's been long enough. And we also kind of need some slime balls for a future project. I can't tell you what the project is. That is top secret information. But I can tell you that we need slime balls, so we're going to be kind of all over the place today in terms of the episode and what we're doing. Now, to start things off, I need to empty this thing out, and I actually need to empty the room out as well. We need to do some digging. So, we're going to make this room really fancy. I'm thinking that it'll be like a science lab. That could be really cool, even though science is definitely not a good subject. All jokes aside, I'd like to turn this room into some sort of science lab looking build. I think that could be cool. Now, behind these walls are the spider spawners. We have one over here and we have one over there. I'd like to incorporate these into the room somehow. So, I'm thinking that we'll probably do maybe beams going up the walls here, and then this will be inside of the room, and we can put maybe a bunch of stained glass windows. That could be cool. So that means the actual wall will be over here. Now, the front of the room or the back or whatever could be over here on this wall, and then the other wall could probably be pushed back two, maybe three blocks to there. Now, if we space these wall pillars maybe three blocks apart, what would we have? We'd have one there, one there, and then one, two, three. Oh, right there. That's actually kind of perfect. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. These pillars will go there, there, and there. Then the back wall, uh, I guess we'll have to dig it out one more. So we have like another pillar there, and then the wall. Yeah, that should work. So starting with a little bit of digging and then emptying of the spiders because they're kind of overflowing. So, now we have a room that has been dug out a lot, and a spider farm that has been emptied. So we should have a lot of levels down here. How many though? No clue. Probably, if I had to take a guess, maybe two whole levels worth. I don't know, there was a lot of spiders inside of this thing. So, that leads us into the next part of today's episode. This Soak Touch pickaxe is beautiful. I love the thing, but unfortunately, it's not doing too well. We healed it up last episode, and it's already at a point where it kind of needs to be healed up again which means it's enchanting time. Fingers crossed, today is the day that we finally get a fortune pickaxe. But to enchant, we're gonna need to get out of here because there's no enchantment set up down here. Now, I know that I'd like the entrance and the exit to be two separate areas in this farm. I also know that I'd like them to be in this corner and in this corner. I'm thinking we'll come in over here and then we'll go out over here. Now, I know that I would also like to do these things with bubble columns because bubble columns are insanely efficient, but unfortunately, I don't have access to soul sand quite yet, so we can't really do one to bring us up and out of this farm. That means for now, we're going to have to use ladders as placeholders, and then eventually, we'll come back in and swap the ladders out for a soul sand bubble column bubble elevator because those things, again, are they're simply just the best. It's the easiest and most efficient way to do things. So basically, Basically, I need to dig myself all the way up to the surface. Now, I'm not too sure where we're going to come out. I do know that we'll come out in a desert because of this screen, but I, other than that, I'm not too sure. I hope we're not near the outpost. I don't think we should be, but I guess you could never be 100% sure. I believe the outpost is more like that way though. So we should be good, but I guess we'll see. Oh, oh, what's that? Oh, no, this is not good. Okay. Oh, nice recovery by me. That was scary, but we found the surface and we definitely are in the desert, of course. But where are we in relation to our other builds? Oh, we're right behind the vine farm. Okay, cool. So then whenever we build a surface marker for the spider farm, 
I guess it'll just be right behind the vine farm, which means our city or whatever we do will end up wrapping into the desert behind the vine farm. I wasn't planning on that, but not a problem at all. We have plenty of flat space to work with over there. So, enchanting. Mm hmm. So, the plan is, was, and has always been a Fortune 3 pickaxe. Today, that's what we're going for, and we're going to get it. We're going to bring it into existence, Elite. So, let's go ahead and roll the enchantment over for the first time and take a look. Efficiency 4. No. Now, I've actually been receiving a lot of questions about why I don't roll the enchantments over with this pickaxe. The questions usually seem to be, why don't I just take this level 30 enchant, take a chance, and if it's not, disenchant the diamond pickaxe, and really that's due to cost. We don't have a lot of levels to spare right now, so that's why I haven't been doing that. But, what we could do is roll the enchantments over with this pickaxe and that level 1 enchant, and then just take the enchantments off of the pickaxe. We just need to be careful to not mess this one up. That would be really bad. I definitely want to keep that other pickaxe efficiency three what do i look like no not efficiency three how about no not efficiency four either mm -mm, no okay not going too well you're making me nervous game i've got three levels left uh, fortune oh yes okay would you take a look at that fortune three unbreaking three not the best pickaxe in the game we could definitely use some efficiency on it but fortune three Finally, I have missed that. That is absolutely amazing. Now we just need efficiency. Efficiency 4 or 5. If we could go straight to 5 on this pickaxe, that would be amazing. So, today we're going to retire the So Touch pickaxe for now until we heal it up or somehow find a mending book. Now, this brings us to the next part of today's project. The next step is actually a tiny bit of exploration. To continue this project, I need red dye. To get red dye, well, we could use poppies, or even more efficiently, we could use rose bushes. So hopefully, we have some rose bushes somewhere in this forest here. I, I'm not sure, but I, I'm i'm really hoping because otherwise we're i guess just gonna have to use poppies i'm really hoping there's going to be some rose bushes over here because otherwise we're gonna have to go with poppies really wanted a rose bush uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm seeing peonies but that's not quite good uh oh no i i don't think we have any rose bushes over here uh mm -hmm. yikes uh, big yikes and I don't think I grabbed any when I went exploring, so I guess what we're going to have to do is take some peonies. It's not the end of the world, but man, I was really hoping for rose bushes. We'll have to explore on stream soon. Definitely, to find some stuff that we just need. We need more wood, too. We'll go ahead and take these, uh, bone meal, uh, get rid of the grass, and do it again a few times. Don't know how many I need. I shouldn't really need more than, I don't know, like... Honestly, 10 should probably be fine. Now, it's time to head back underground. So, the first part of the build that I am pretty much solid on is right over here. I'd like to put some sort of window in so we can actually see clean into this spider room. I think windows are going to be a huge part of today's build because, I mean, if we can, why not? They'll just make things look even more fancy. So, this window should be probably uh, double layered. We're going to do black stained glass first right here where these stone blocks are then we'll hollow out the middle stone block and then in the back over there where those stone bricks are we'll actually end up doing red stained glass i think that's going to create an interesting fog look which should look pretty sweet now i'm going with red stained glass in this build because spider eyes are red and i think it'll add a nice touch to this build but uh, anyways this whole back wall needs to be red stained glass so there we go a whole red wall then in the middle i think we need to leave this empty if we fill things in we won't get an interesting fog look and i'd love to have an interesting fog look so basically we'll end up with this one black white area that's a void of nothingness if i'm remembering how these mechanics work correctly this should end up looking pretty cool if it doesn't we'll switch things up you know, I think that actually looks really, really cool. We're going to leave the gap there. That's kind of what I was going for. I was thinking it would make more of a foggy look, but not going to lie. I am not disappointed at all with this. So that, that's absolutely going to stay. Now, technically, we will have a little bit of dark space in between these two windows, which is a bummer, but I'm not worried about it at all because buttons are a thing. To prevent things like zombies and skeletons and creepers from spawning in here, we'll just put a bunch of buttons. We won't even really be able to notice the buttons, and the spawns will not happen. Problem solved. 
Now to keep things consistent and cool looking, we'll go on top of all of this glass and fill things in with stone brick slabs. So, boom, there we go. Now we have a box that almost looks like some sort of tank and spiders are filling in below it. I think that's pretty cool. Now, these side beams. So, so we could use spruce, that would look good, but I think smooth stone might actually look even better or, uh, or stone brick, I'm not too sure. I'm kind of torn here. We could go with stone brick as these support beams, which would definitely match that thing. Or we could go with the smooth stone, which would look really, really clean and modern, but wouldn't match as well. Hmm. Uh, which do we like more? Honestly, I'm thinking the stone bricks. We could use different variants of stone bricks going all the way up to the ceiling, and that'll look good. We can save these things for other parts of the build. To make sure things continue to look good and cool, we're going to go ahead and give this area a little bit of depth as well. So this box sort of pops out of the wall in a way and then maybe this back beam area all of this could all be filled in with stone bricks so this beam will go all the way up but this side of the beam this will end early so it doesn't block things that we do up there okay so the wall pillars are now in they're good now uh, technically we would have two more right there and then two more over here where these spruce logs are but i think i'd like to switch things up and make things a little bit more uh, a little bit more cool so in these back corners to enter and exit again we'll be having bubble columns now bubble columns actually look really really cool at least in my opinion so i'd like to show them off now to show them off a little bit i think we'll do glass so we'll have a glass pillar here and a glass pillar right there as well but we'll leave one side open which side i don't know uh, but one side will stay open so we can actually enter and exit the thing i think it could be cool to do something with slabs behind the glass just to to add a little bit more detail instead of having glass connect straight up to the wall so with all that being said i'm thinking if we put polished stone slabs in here like this and then maybe like red stained glass in front of those slabs things would start to look pretty cool at least in my opinion again especially once we actually get the water inside of here so something kind of like that uh definitely that looks pretty sweet to me but i'm not too sure where we'll actually end up putting the entrance for now we'll just leave it like that i guess that's fine or you know what we could actually just pull these ones out and do a little beam there and then we'll put signs on either side of this wall and that's how we go in and out of the water so boom like that problem solved you know i think i really like how that turned out so we're gonna go ahead and copy that identically over here now okay so check check those two things are good and they look pretty cool too now that brings us to the walls we need to take care of the walls and also the floor down here in this low area but not up there i have a different plan for over there so i think this is going to actually be pretty easy i have two ideas for the floor i think we could probably get away with light gray concrete powder this should actually look pretty good and definitely feel like all sciency and stuff like that so that's what we'll do on the floor on the walls, I'm thinking we could do something a little more, uh, I guess something that has a little bit more to it. We'll line the bottom with smooth stone, just like that. And then I think on the rest of the walls, all the way up to the ceiling, we could probably uh, actually do white concrete, but not the powder, the actual solid hardened concrete. So I'm going to wait to do the floor because I'm going to dump water all over this room. I'm not 100% sure on this wall, but I think it'll definitely fit our theme and it should look pretty good. This is something that I've actually never done before too, so I guess it's a, a bit of a, a bit of a test. Now in my opinion, the most efficient way to turn concrete powder into concrete is to place it down wherever it needs to go, if possible, and then do the water after, so something just like that. That way we don't have to place concrete and then break it and then go back and place it down again. You know, it basically cuts out a whole lot of steps, which is really nice. But what do we think about the wall? Is it going to work? Hmm. I mean, I think it's going to work. It's going to be pretty plain and pretty empty, but isn't that what a science lab is? Um yeah i think that's gonna be really cool actually and it'll put a lot of emphasis on this part of the build so let's go ahead and try that out on all of the other walls and my torches i kind of need you back my single torch 
Now, uh, one big thing that we don't have for this build that would be amazing is sea lanterns. If we could do sea lantern lighting in here, that would look really, really sciency and clean and laboratory-like, but unfortunately, we don't really have access to sea lanterns quite yet, so that's something that we're just gonna kind of have to keep in mind, and eventually we'll come back in definitely and get sea lanterns in this build because that would be, I mean, I think it would be pretty sweet. Oh yeah, definitely, 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 definitely. That looks sweet. All right, so the walls are coming in beautifully. I decided to switch things up on the back wall though because I didn't want the room to start to feel, you know, like too cramped in. So I pushed this wall back a little bit actually, as you can see, and I think it looks pretty nice. I'm actually really, really liking how this corner looks with this beam right there and that's kind of a problem. It makes me want to change this wall up entirely as well, but I think we're just gonna go ahead and leave it as is for now. And these back corners will just be a little bit different, but man, I don't know. I just really love how that looks. So the walls are in now. That means it's time to go ahead and do the floor. Then we need to figure out the ceiling and that area up there, but that space should be pretty easy, I think. And for now, I'm actually gonna go ahead and leave a door over there into the cave system because that cave system is not finished. We definitely need a way back into it so I can go and finish it up and find any diamonds that might potentially be inside of it. Now, at the front of the spider farm, we have an area that steps downwards a little bit. I think we could probably do this area with maybe polished andesite staircases, maybe? I'm not, oh no, uh, we'd run out of the room there. Hmm, how could we do this then? Um, Cause I don't really wanna push things back even more unless I can do this and then that. Can we get through? No, we can't, mm hmm. Well, that complicates things quite a bit. Uh, how do we get down there? Um, we could do like a ladder, that would work. Uh, or, oh wow. That actually makes things pretty complicated here. Hmm, how could we do that? Because I was thinking we would just line this whole area with staircases and then it wouldn't be a problem. We could just go right down there, but ah, uh, because I don't really want to push the staircases back even more. That'll make them hang out into the room. Kind of oddly, right? Eh, or maybe not. Maybe that wouldn't be bad. Yeah, that actually might not be bad. We'll go ahead and do that. Oh no, look at him go. The crazy patterns, the mind-blowing moves. How did he ever think of this? Uh, I don't know, the world may never know, but uh, would you take a look at that? That is, uh, that's actually pretty cool looking. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that. Now, I'd like to do one more thing to make this top area a little bit more fancy and a little bit more safe. In the last episode, right at the end, I said we could put an extra block or a trapdoor right here to keep us far, far away from the spiders so we never get poisoned. But I said that I would be careful. Now, the careful part, that was kind of a lie. I've been trying to be careful, but as you guys have probably noticed throughout the episode, I just keep getting poisoned, which is kind of annoying, not gonna lie. So, we're gonna go ahead and put a bunch of levers here, power them all, and then put trap doors above these levers to make things look like we have some sort of railing holding us back. Now, the trap door should be made out of iron. This is going to get expense. Oh, we don't even have enough iron here. We're gonna have to go back up to the surface and get more because I think I'd like to basically put a bunch of iron trap doors like that to make a really fancy railing. Uh, I'm gonna need you to go get more iron. I definitely have enough, so I'm not worried about it, but I think this look would be actually pretty sweet, and look at that, we are safe. That is beautiful. Uh-huh. <laughs> definitely very sciency. Now, the other thing that I have down here that I'd like to put in that we can't entirely really do quite yet is some sort of carpeted floor with lighting below it. So the middle of this room, um, really, uh, let's see, these two blocks uh, could use more lighting. Now what we could do for now is put torches below carpet, but then I think, oh no, we don't actually fall through it. Okay, yeah, torches below the carpet for now until we get something a little bit better. I'd like to do a strip of carpet going down the middle of this room so things stay nice and bright. We definitely don't want any spawns happening down here. Spawns in this room, that would be definitely big bad and not, not very good for AFK purposes. So let's see, maybe this goes one more on either side and then we'll call that good. And then eventually we'll come back in and put probably jack-o'-lanterns below this carpet here. So, uh, or wow, actually carpet stops the torch particle effect. Wow, that's a life hack. 
I didn't realize that. I swear, the particle effects used to go right through these things. Hmm. When was that change made? Interesting. Now, we also need to come up with a way to get up on top of this thing. Initially, I was thinking ladders right here, but uh, we get poison. Now, the poison isn't a big deal. We can just kind of ignore it and jump up here, but definitely kind of annoying. So, the ladders there, that's not really going to work. Instead, we could maybe do... I was thinking... We can do ladders going up on these things and then make a little walkway going over. That might not be bad. Like, we could do a diagonal walkway, maybe? Almost looking like some sort of support. But at the same time, it might be kind of weird. So the other option is doing a bunch of ladders right here and climbing up over here and then inching over and walking over like that. I, I'm thinking that that's going to be the way to go, but how would some sort of walkway look? What if we did something like that? Would that look weird? Mm. no it doesn't necessarily look too bad how easy is it to use can we climb up this thing easily and get over to it uh yeah that's pretty easy hmm honestly maybe we do this one but with stone brick stone brick might look a little bit better it'll blend in more now final touches before we go back up to the surface and grab everything that we need to finish up this build so on these spider chambers, I'd like to put windows so we can see inside of them. So something like that. And then on the other side, something just like that as well. These things will go up to wherever we do the ceiling, which I think will be maybe one block above this area right here. We could also get away with putting some windows on this side as well, which I think would look really good. And same with over there. Then uh, this thing right here. I think we should turn all of this into glass as well. That would look really, really cool. Now, uh, this area is going to become very, very dark because we're not going to put torches on top of the glass. But thankfully, mobs will not spawn on glass, so it's not something that we really need to worry about. Where these windows would connect, I think I'll do a bunch of stone, or smooth stone, excuse me, uh, to make things look all supported. On this back wall, I'm really not too sure. I'm just going to kind of place things until I find something that I really like and uh, that I think looks pretty good. So... That's pretty much the plan for the rest of the build. Basically, lots of glass. Now, the ceiling. I'm thinking that we could do something cool with, uh, actually, spruce logs in 3x3 three three sections. So, something like something like that. And then, inside of these 3x3 three three areas, we'll do maybe, I think, oak slabs on uh, the top half of this block. So, we get a little bit of depth going on. And so, the original wood color from the mineshaft is brought into the build. We do have a lot of gray and sort of a lot of stone on this build as well. So some sort of stone ceiling or gray ceiling, I think that would be very bad. So definitely going to try and avoid that. But I think for the most part, that is the rest of this build. So I'm going to go ahead and get to building, finish this thing up, and then we'll be back in no time with uh, the next part, the final part of today's episode. And so, the build is now fully complete. Now, I did go ahead and add a brand new entry point. The entry point is just a straight line away from the exit point. Now, currently, this thing is just a dropper. I still am considering putting a magma block bubble column in here, but the dropper actually works just as well, if not better, because it's super, super fast, and we don't have to worry about the magma block hurting us. Now, this room, I am super happy with how it turned out. I think this room definitely fits that science lab aesthetic that we were going for. Now on the back wall, I built a gallery wall. I was imagining that these paintings would be like sciencey charts, but obviously they're not. They're just Minecraft paintings. A gallery wall is basically a wall with a bunch of different paintings on it. The key to getting these walls right is making sure that your paintings are different shapes and sizes and placed randomly on the wall. If you put all your paintings in a line or in a cluster in the middle, it won't work out very well. I do think that I could maybe use two more paintings on this wall, one in the top left and one in the bottom right, but for now, I'm pretty content with it. Now over here, we have a super secret trapdoor. I can't tell you guys about this very much because it's nothing right now, but eventually it'll be something. You'll, you'll know about it later. Over here, a fancy fancy thing, don't know what it is. And then over here, we have storage. Not a lot of storage in this build, that is definitely intentional, uh, but yeah, that's something that we'll talk about later. Again, over here, this is the entrance to the cave system that I need to finish caving, and then up top. So, up top, I got really fancy and used a block that I almost never use. Up top, I figured I had to use this glazed terracotta because the stuff looks perfect for a spider farm. I mean, we're using black and red in this build, so this block, this definitely came to mind, and I 
think it fits really well. Now, it is going to be such a minor detail. We won't really ever see it. I mean, you can barely see it through the glass, so I don't know. It's up there. It's a nice detail, but you won't really ever see it. Now, uh, the ceiling. I really like how that looks, too. I think that's really, really cool, and it makes me want to do the ceiling in other places, too. I really think that doing white wool in the middle of these areas instead popped one block up would look amazing, but that's definitely not for this build. We have lots of white already. But, uh, for the spider farm, that is actually just about it. I'm really happy with how this thing turned out, and I can't wait to use this thing for more experience. It is amazing. This barrier helps out a lot, like seriously. It keeps me way more safe, way less poisoning is happening, and that's a good thing, because poisoning is, well, it's kind of annoying. Now this chest, this is a chest of random building supplies that needs to go. I have to move that over to the storage building, but first, we need to put a few final touches on the storage building. Ah, uh, so you hear that? Mm-hmm. The sound of no cave spiders. So much better. Cave spiders are very, very annoying. Should have probably just turned off the hostile mob sounds before making this episode, but uh, yeah. Now we're over here at the storage building because I made a big change. Last time you guys saw this building, there was yellow terracotta on the floor. I kind of decided that I didn't like the yellow terracotta anymore, and a lot of you guys will probably agree with that. I did actually see that a lot of you guys didn't seem to like it. Now we have acacia planks in here. I don't know how I feel about this either, but it does match the walls and the item frames quite a bit more, so definitely share your thoughts down below, and if you have a better block, definitely let me know as well. The plan is still to remove all of these birch planks because uh, they, they just don't match as well. So those will go away and get replaced with upside down sandstone staircases, but I just have to go get more sandstone. Now, the final thing that we're doing today is finding some slime balls for a future project. We currently have six. We found those on stream and it was really cool, but we're too short. We need two more slime balls total. Now, thankfully, we have a really nice place where we can hunt for slime balls. That place is down here in our strip mine. So, there's actually a little bit more to slime hunting than really what we'll go over here at the end of this episode. Eventually, we will definitely make a slime farm and we'll talk more about it, but for now, basically know that slime only spawn in certain chunks in your world. These chunks look exactly the same as your normal Minecraft chunks. Now, what is a chunk? Well, a chunk is basically a 16 by 16 block area inside of your world. Chunks are basically Minecraft's way of dividing your world up into groups so it can load and unload them when certain areas need loading and unloading. Now, slime will only spawn in certain chunks below Y40. We're currently down at Y11, definitely below Y40. Now for a slime to spawn, we need to give it some room. How much room? Well, a three x three hallway should do perfectly fine. So the plan here is to continue this hallway down a ways and then probably create another hallway perpendicular with this one going through chunks as well. Hopefully, eventually a slime will spawn and we'll be able to take it out. We'll get two slime balls at least and then we'll be good to go. We can end the episode, but this could potentially take some time. It just sort of depends on I guess really when a slime spawns. As soon as one spawns, that'll be that, but until then, I think I'm going to just keep digging hallways. Thankfully, we've got this fortune pickaxe, so if we find some diamonds, well, we can multiply those things right off the bat, which would be really nice. I am craving diamonds, we need more, so uh, if this does end up taking a while, hopefully we at least find diamonds, but that's the plan now to wrap up the episode so digging time for me and i'll be back as soon as i find that first slime hopefully it doesn't take too long uh, also by the way if you're wondering why i don't go back to where i found the slime on stream well i vaguely remember where it was but i also don't so <laughs> probably should have marked that area a little bit better whoops Oh boy, look at that. Some beautiful, beautiful blue rocks right behind iron. What I tell you guys, always, always take all of the ore that you find when you're branch mining or caving really deep in a cave because look at that. 10 diamonds richer. Pretty nice. Very amazing. That's a nice development, but uh, still no development when it comes to slime. Hopefully that'll uh, develop soon too. That would be sweet. All right, here goes nothing. Hopefully there are some slime down here this time, but so far I have had unfortunately no luck. Now I've been using that rail line to load and unload this area. Hopefully that will despawn the mobs that are currently spawned idling in caves somewhere and then maybe give slime a chance to actually spawn down here somewhere. 
Now, it doesn't look like it in this hallway, but we do have a whole nother hallway over here. Maybe, maybe, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I've been at this for a little while now. The pickaxe has lost quite a bit of durability. No more diamonds, but lots of other stuff. And I did actually, interestingly, end up connecting this over to our spider farm, which I thought that was actually pretty cool. But we're not going to go in there. Can't hear any more cave spiders today. No, no, no. Big no. Now, uh, over here, this actually goes right underneath the spider farm, which is pretty cool. But would have been really really cool to see some slime but unfortunately that is not the case here today so i think what i'm gonna do is have this project spill over into in between episodes and maybe even the next episode but we technically uh, could progress without the slime for now we could uh, maybe hunt them in like a swamp or something but this method just doesn't seem to be working now, I have gone through quite a few chunks, so I'm definitely positive that there should be a slime chunk in here, but, yep, just haven't seen it happen yet, so maybe, maybe we'll meet up next episode with some slime balls. If not, then we'll have to find them, or we can just kind of hold off. But that is just about it for this episode of the Minecraft God. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, as always, like, subscribe, and remember, streams Thursdays, 3 p.m. Eastern. Today, I'd like to send a shout out to my patron, Bowser254. Thank you very much for the support, and I will see you all in the next one. On the end slide will be the playlist if you miss an episode and you'd like to catch up. But uh, please, uh, wish me luck with slime hunting, and yeah, I will see you next time. Goodbye, everyone.